I'm about to tell you guys a story about how the truck broke down. Now technically, the truck did not break down. It was running. It just became too risky to continue driving. All right, we're talking about the 1980 Toyota mini truck, the 20R with the Weber carb. I'm driving it and all of a sudden it starts flooding and it starts dying on me at a stoplight. And I know something's wrong, it's not running right. And so I pull over quick and I find that the carburetor or around that, the top of the carburetor, the air filter is dripping gasoline. And it's dripping gasoline into the engine compartment and I know that that's not safe. Now listen guys, I have a fire extinguisher in the cab, but if that truck had caught on fire while I was driving, then we risk the entire build being lost because I there's gasoline. You can't have open gasoline in the engine bay, so I had to get it towed. Now I'm going to take you guys back into the story and show you guys exactly what happened. We diagnosed it. We know what happened, and this is where it began. Right here, this footage I'm showing you right now, at this gas station, I was filling up. I had a little less than a half a tank. I figured I'd stop and fill up. Well, I think I got about a 17-gallon tank. We're putting the ethanol-free gasoline in it. Because when this truck was made, as far as I know, there wasn't no ethanol in the gasoline. And winter's coming. I didn't know if there was going to be snow. Didn't want to be storing the truck, you know, extended periods of time without running it. If there was snow. And it took way more fuel than I expected. Look, listen. Is it? let's break this down for you guys because this is all hindsight now my first suspicion was that the fuel pressure regulator was out of spec and it was pushing too much gasoline up into the carb and spewing gas out of the carb up into the air filter housing but that's not what was happening and I can show you guys here I have footage from that day about two hours before I finally decided to call it quits and get it towed look Look at the fuel pressure regulator gauge right here. Spec is within two to three PSI, as far as I'm concerned, and according to the previous owner. Well, I just showed you the gauge on two different video footages, and this was right before it broke down after I knew it was having trouble, but I didn't know what the trouble was. And so it wasn't out of spec. The fuel pressure regulator wasn't out of spec. The carb was not out of spec all right and this goes back to what i showed you guys just a few moments before at the point that i was taking this footage i did not know what the problem was what was causing this fuel to spew up into the carb and out of the top of the carb into the air filter housing i didn't know what was causing that but the first thing i suspected was the fuel pressure regulator and the second thing i suspected was maybe that the carb was out of tune but the guy who sold me the truck was like, look, man, <laughs> this carb, I've tuned it as, as it needs to stay where it's at. And I trusted him because he was a Toyota technician. He was a Toyota tech. Uh, he's, and he'd since had gone on to, to uh, get an engineering degree, and he didn't work for a Toyota dealership anymore. He just knew what he was doing. Uh, and this guy, I trusted him. I liked him a lot. Uh, he is on YouTube, but the videos that he published are now past compared to what I'm showing you as present on this current build. And... So, anyways, the, the truck started to break down in the sense that it was flooding, and I knew something was wrong. I knew it shouldn't be flooding, and I pulled over, and I could see gasoline dripping in the engine bay. And let's be real, guys. Like I, As I mentioned earlier, I have, a, I have a fire extinguisher, but you can't risk driving a build like this around when there's gasoline dripping in the engine bay. You, you can't. You, you risk losing the whole thing. And so I'm sitting here at this, I'm in between clients doing my job and I'm trying to drive the truck around as like my fun vehicle and it's dripping gas and it's flooding and I just can't figure out what's going on. So I called that tow truck, got it towed and we start, start digging into diagnosing this thing. And I do have some footage of that day of the actual gasoline dripping down, but on the footage I have, it's only just a few drops. And to be honest with you, when I wasn't filming, I saw like a drip like a stream of gasoline dripping down, much more. Take a look.
It's dripping gas right there. So anyways, I had to get it towed. There was much more gasoline at one point dripping out of the air filter housing above the carburetor. And I had originally su suspected that it was the carburetor or the fuel pressure regulator pumping too much gas up through the carburetor. But that was not the case. It was, in fact, the line that runs from the gas tank to the carburetor as a vapor recapture system and so there's a line that ran from that tube up into the bottom of the carburetor now let's be real guys if the truck's not running if it's sitting then that's just the vent for the vapor from the gas tank but if the truck is running then that vapor can escape and it'll get recycled up into the carb in that air filter housing but let's be real guys like there should never be a time when liquid gasoline burps its way up that vapor recapture tube and the previous owner had deleted the charcoal canister so that's gone and so it's literally just a line from the gas tank up to the carburetor that should never ever ever allow liquid gasoline to spew up into the air filter housing. It was not the carburetor. It was not the fuel pressure regulator. Gasoline was not getting spit up out of the top of the carburetor. It was getting spit from the vapor recapture line because the fuel tank was overfilled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's what happened. So what did I do? The first thing I did was I took the gas cap which is noted as a vented gas cap, but it's vented only one way, which means only air can come in. Air cannot go out. It's a one-way vent. I just peeled that back and deleted that vent and made it an open gas cap. Like it, the gas cap does not pressurize the gas tank. I don't need that. Like you might need that in your state. I can give a mm about that. Mm-hmm. Nope. So... What was the next thing I did is I just went ahead and capped that vapor line that originally went back to the bottom of the carburetor. Just cap that. Go ahead and cap that off. And I'm going to leave you guys with some sounds of the exhaust. This is the stock exhaust that my guy, the previous owner, replaced. And I'm going to replace the total exhaust. I'm going to do full exhaust on this. Yeah, did you hear it? But this is the, this is the current exhaust. And the next video will be me showing you how I'm about to do the whole exhaust and make it real tight.